Hello and welcome to Gupshop's webinar on how to create a chatbot on all messaging platforms. My name is Sohan Maheshwar and I lead developer relations at Gupshop. First, a little bit about bots. The recent spate of announcements and media stories from industry leading tech companies such as Microsoft and Facebook and many major brands indicates, indicates that bots aren't justified and that they are here to stay. These bots can do anything from provide weather and traffic updates, take pizza orders, book a cab or even tell you a joke, all by interacting directly with the people who want to get them. We'll talk about what exactly a chatbot is, about the chatbot ecosystem, and we'll also show you a quick demo on getting started with your first cross-platform chatbot. Do note that we we'll send out a recording of the webinar. Also, the floor is open, so feel free to ask questions at any, uh, any point of time, and we'll try and get to as many as we can. Without further ado, uh, here's my co-presenter, Birut Sheth, the CEO of Gupshop. Yeah, Birut, go ahead. Uh, okay. So, hi, hi everyone. Um, I guess good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on which time zone you're dialing in from. Uh, I'm here in the Bay Area. Uh, it's a little cloudy. Hopefully, uh, it'll get sunnier later in the day. Anyway, it's uh, super exciting to be uh, talking about bots. Um, I think it's a big, uh, you know, there's something very interesting, very exciting going on. So, you know, before we dive into the tactical things of, okay, how do you build a bot and, you know, and, and so on, I think it's really important to appreciate what's going on out there. Uh, why is it important? Uh, you know, is this, a, is this the sort of trend of the month or is this a fad that's going to die out soon or is this something more uh, tangible, something more substantial? And I think to, uh, you know, to put it in context, uh, so, you know, you kind of have to look back and see, okay, what's what's happening and why is it happening? So let me just share a little bit of context here, okay? And there's this uh, first slide that I find very useful. It's a little dense, so just give me a minute. I'll take you through it. Uh, it's a lot simpler than it looks. Um, but what I'm going to do here is sort of take you through the uh, the uh, quick history of the personal computing industry. If you sort of go back and look at the last... Uh, you know, 40, 50 years of uh, since the PC was born, um, I think you can you can see that there have been a few major paradigms, about three paradigms in the way in which we primarily use computers, right? Um, uh, right in the early days, so let's say you know after the PC was born in the mid 80s, um, the the primary metaphor was uh, was the desktop, right? You bought a computer, it came with a desktop operating system. And then uh, you customize that computer by downloading different clients. It could be, you know, a word processor or a presentation, you know, presentation software or a game that you download onto onto your computer. And then you'd go your merry way using using the computer, right? And then in the mid '90s, uh, we switched the the primary the major paradigm uh, switched, right? Uh, and we went to a browser-based paradigm. So the browser was the new platform. And then you know the, the the thin client server side development approach. And once once you had the browser, you could go visit different websites. Um, you could go visit you know any e commerce website or a gaming website or what have you. That's how you personalized your experience, right? So the browser was the new platform, and the website was was the new application, uh, if you will. Um, and then a, about a decade later, uh, we had another sort of major uh, paradigm shift. Right, where uh, we went to the small screen, the smartphone, uh, and the smartphone OS became the new platform. Right, iOS and Android, uh, and then uh, there were these mobile apps that you could download from app stores, which allowed you to customize your personal computing experience. Right, and each of these uh, paradigm shifts were were huge. They were transformational. Right, so the web added uh, connectivity right to the to the PC uh, paradigm. And uh, the mobile uh, framework sort of made it much more, you know, much more global, much more ubiquitous. We went from maybe one or two billion web users to about five or six billion users worldwide using smartphones, right? So a big, big shift. Uh, another big thing is that <clears throat> each of these paradigm shifts uh, created or, or unleashed sort of massive economic value, right? Maybe, I don't know, a trillion dollars worth of economic value. If you think in the web, you know, companies like Google, Yahoo, Amazon, eBay, and so on didn't exist uh, before uh, before the web and sort of uh, created such uh, new businesses. Similarly, when, when we went to the smartphone and app era, 
you know, Instagram and Snapchat and WhatsApp and WeChat, Line, Kakao. I mean, these things just didn't exist until until after um, after the app ecosystem happened, right? So, uh, so at this point in time, we find ourselves on the verge of yet another uh, major uh, paradigm shift, right? Um, and that's around messaging. The, the messaging app becomes the new platform, and uh, a software program that you can chat with, and we're calling it a bot. Uh, but messaging and bots sort of are the new new paradigm. And you know, why is this uh, why is this happening now? Uh, you know, a variety of reasons. I think the the earlier paradigm, the uh, smartphone and app paradigm is getting sort of saturated, if you will. We're getting apt out, uh, if I may. Uh, that while there are millions of apps, you know, most of us use no more than a dozen apps every day. Uh, people are simply not downloading as many new apps as one would like, right? Uh, the, the cost of, from a developer standpoint, the cost of developing an app with its native screens is really high. Uh, the cost of uh, upgrading is very high as well because of the download barrier, right? You, you need uh, uh, the user to download the app, uh, which is a lot of work. And then, um, you know, just the cost of updating it and so on is very high. Even from the consumer standpoint, the, the, the download requires advanced planning, initial thought, uh, so that you have the app when you need it uh, with you. So meanwhile, we've seen that the number one messaging app, uh, number one app, by far, uh, worldwide, is the messaging app. Uh, people are spending, you know, uh, they're intensely engaged dozens of times a day. They're opening the messaging app and using it. So, um, so that's, you know, so that begs the question, what if you could keep all users right inside the messaging app and, and sort of bring the whole internet in there, right? What if you could uh, shop and order pizza and book a taxi and, uh, you know, do your banking and trading or whatever you need to do right within the messaging app. Uh, it offers numerous advantages, right? Uh, firstly, the consumer is already there, um, so the, they're using it, uh, so the adoption is going to be huge. Uh, and secondly, it brings you, you know, it brings in server-side uh, development. We, we sort of move from this client-side approach uh, that we have with mobile apps, uh, with mobile apps to server-side development with bots, right? And frankly, if you think about it, you know, when Steve Jobs came up with the App Store, uh, you'd have thought that we knew server-side development was better. You know, why did we go down with the app uh, framework? And I think the reality is mobile networks were not as good, right? When networks are not good, you generally we tend to do client-side development. But when networks are better, it makes uh, just more sense, technical and economic sense, to to do server-side development. So finally, we find, you know, so we find ourselves at this point in time where networks are better, messaging apps are popular, um, and you know, uh, messaging apps are opening up APIs, right? That's the other big deal. Uh, they're opening up APIs that allows all of this to happen. So I think if you put it in this context, you know, this this change, this paradigm shift is a is a big deal, and it makes uh, a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense for consumers, for developers, uh, for the whole ecosystem. And I believe, you know, this is going to usher in uh, uh, some massive innovation and opportunities uh, over the next uh, decade or so. And, you know, I'm just going to uh, skip this. Uh, so, so like I mentioned earlier, right, why is this picking up so much interest and so much buzz right now? It's because all of these uh, messaging platforms are opening up APIs They've either already opened up APIs or are about to open up soon. I think the one major app that's still pending is uh, WhatsApp, uh, but they have announced they're you know they're going to do something soon, and we'll we'll see what it is. So certainly, all of this coming together at a at a very interesting uh, point in time. So if I go further, okay. So if you buy the fact that uh, you know this is a major paradigm shift and it's it's great for consumers, great for developers. Uh, so then it begs the question, okay, who's going to have to build a bot, right? And and if you think about it, you know, I think the analogous question is who needs to build a website or who needs to build an app? And the answer is pretty much everyone, right? Uh, every business, every brand, um, whether it's a large enterprise or a startup, uh, they they have to, I mean, you know, if, if you're in the tech space, you kind of have to have a website. And uh, for the most part, you need to have an app. Well, I think the bot is going to be about the same thing. Literally everybody is going to need 
to have bots uh, because that's where the consumers are, right? They expect to see you inside the messaging app and uh, it requires you, you know, businesses will need to be there as well. Um, else, you know, they lose out of the competition. Uh, you know, consumers sort of will, uh, you know that whenever these, whenever these paradigm shifts happen, uh, consumer behavior changes ever so slightly and then, you know, once they start expect to see all the brands and consumers in one, uh, all the brands and businesses in one place, uh, then they just kind of stick to that habit and will oftentimes switch brands and switch businesses they're working with um, for convenience and for ease of use, right? Um, so I think in the, in the same vein, so these are a handful of brands and businesses that were announced at the F8 uh, conference, but since then, there are many, many more uh, businesses and many more companies, uh, you know, that have either already launched bots or are working uh, actively on developing bots and launching them out there. So I think it's a it's an incredibly exciting time uh, for the entire ecosystem. <clears throat> I think if you're a brand or a business, this gives you another uh, um, channel to engage users. Uh, that's much more powerful, right? You can bypass the download barrier. You can uh, you can engage with users much more actively, dozens of times a day, um, depending on the use case, right? So it gives you a very, uh, very engaging and convenient user channel. And uh, from a consumer standpoint, the ease of use uh, is, is huge. I think uh, developers are getting excited, entrepreneurs too, uh, and therefore the investors are inevitably following in as well. Uh, there's a bit of a media frenzy uh, going on too. But I think, in a way, this is all good. While there will inevitably be some hype and some excessive sort of projection and forecasting, uh, I think there's something substantial and real that's going on. And I think it's important for for developers, entrepreneurs, you know, to be to be doing these things. And we have, you know, there's a ton of excitement at the meetups, uh, at least here in the valley. Uh, there's a lot of uh, engagement, a lot of interest, and a lot of activity uh, going on. Um, okay, so I think if you if you sort of agree with what I've said, which is you know this is a major paradigm shift. We're moving to messaging and bots, and every business and every brand is going to build it. Uh, then sort of you know that brings us to the question of okay, what does what does Gupshub do, right? And what we do, you know, as as this phenomena happen, if you're going to need to build millions of bots, uh, you know, the the ecosystem needs tools, tools that makes it easy. Uh, to, to build bots, right? Because, uh, you know, it takes a lot of work and there's a lot of repetitive work and there's common things that different bot developers have to do. So, so Gupshup is the, is the leading bot building platform, right? Uh, it's sort of the easiest and fastest way to build bots. Now, uh, before I share what we're doing, I just want to share a little bit of context of, uh, about Gupshup. You know, we've been working on messaging and bots uh, for a for a long time. Um, you know, long before it became fashionable or trendy. Uh, recently, uh, we've been in the messaging space for several years. Uh, in fact, messaging in the feature phone era meant uh, SMS messaging, and we are one of the largest sort of cloud uh, APIs, cloud-based platforms for uh, SMS messaging. We've been doing that for like six, seven years. We do about four billion messages a month, uh, mainly in Asia. And then uh, as IP messaging took off, uh, you know, clearly we saw the rise of uh, many consumer messaging apps, but most of these apps were closed uh, until very recently. So about two years ago, we in fact launched our own messaging app called TeamChat. And, uh, you know, to this day, I think it's one of the most advanced uh, messaging apps still because we pioneered this concept of structured, uh, structured messages. We call them smart messages right inside the message, right? So you could have uh, structured fields and interactive elements, you know, buttons and form fields and, and so on right in the message so that, uh, you know, you don't need to stay with plain text alone. You could actually have structured interactions uh, right within the message itself. And, you know, we launched that two years ago and, you know, it was, it was all validated when Facebook uh, a few weeks ago said, you know, they also agree that it's not going to be all just plain text. It's going to be a hybrid of structured and text interactions uh, as well. So uh, again, so, so we launched that capability two years ago. And in fact, uh, we had APIs uh, for users to build bots. Now, you know, we didn't exactly call it bots at that time. These were 
sort of you know messaging workflow automation and thing you know terms like that. Uh, but uh, but we've been working on that uh, for a while, right? So in the process, we've actually built and deployed uh, hundreds of bots in production. Uh, Team Chat is being used by you know 2,000 plus businesses and 50,000 users worldwide. So so we just acquired a lot of experience building bots and uh, sort of went through a lot of pain, a, a lot of struggles in terms of how do you build it, once it's built, how do you test it, and especially now that there are so many channels, there's so much work to be done, how do you, uh, you know, then, then deploy it, where do you host it, how do you monitor it, you know, and bot monitoring again is more complicated, I'll, I'll sort of go through some of these things, but the point is, uh, we just aggregated all our experience, and now that the other messaging platforms are opening up, uh, we, we've created, you know, we've sort of, taken all our experience and expertise and put it into building this bot platform, right? So the short of it is uh, things that most bot developers will need to do, uh, all those common patterns and repetitive work, uh, we've packaged it, embedded into a bot platform, so it gets you started very, very quickly. Uh, it automates all the, all the plumbing, the infrastructure, if you will, so that you can get started at a very high level, right? You can, it frees the developer to focus on just their business workflow, rather than uh, sort of you know having to having to reinvent the wheel uh, every time. So let me uh, dig uh, a little deeper, and uh, you know I'll go through the next few slides very quickly because we're actually going to show you a, a demo of these things. But I want to send some uh, context, right? So firstly, uh, you know the bot platform offers uh, tools sort of for the entire bot lifecycle, right? Now, the bot lifecycle has multiple stages. I mean, we show just a few on this slide, but uh, you know, you, you sort of have to start with specking a bot and then scripting a bot, right? Because it's a conversational interface. Uh, then developing the bot, uh, testing the bot, right? Not just in an emulator, but testing it on all the channels that you intend to deploy it to. Uh, after you've tested it, um, then you need to uh, actually host it, host the bot somewhere. Uh, you need to publish it in each of the channels, right? There's a lot of work there. Uh, monitoring a bot is a little more complicated because it's not just a heartbeat monitor that the system is up or down, but also uh, is it is it responsive to the specific messages uh, that the users might request, right? So, so monitoring uh, sort of bot uptime is also uh, more complicated. And then, uh, you know, uh, analytics, right? Who's using the bot? What are they doing with it? Um, search and discovery of bot as well. You know, where do you promote it? How do you get users to use it and so on? So, so for this entire sort of end-to-end -end bot lifecycle, you know, we've developed, uh, we've developed tools and sort of streamlined it that we'll show to you in just a second, right? Um, the other thing I should mention is cross-platform APIs, right? You can write once, run anywhere, right? If you're if a developer is building bots individually for each channel, I think that's just way too much uh, effort, and it's going to come back and bite them sort of later on, because um, you know once you build a bot, uh, you're also going to constantly upgrade it because on server -side, in server side development your cycles are a lot shorter. So let's say if you're upgrading the bot every week and you have a dozen bots to manage, I mean that just uh, leads to a lot of uh, challenges. And uh, you know it's just way too expensive. So uh, what we've done is provided simple cross-platform API. You write once, it works on every channel everywhere, right? Um, there's a there's a bot builder tool. I think we're going to dive into this uh, immediately after uh, this in, in a minute. So I'm just going to skip this part. But but the the essence is you can very quickly just focus on uh, your bot process and workflow rather than uh, Worrying about uh, you know worrying about the plumbing which you get out of the box. There are some analytics that are available automatically built in. Uh, you can some configuration capabilities. Uh, you know message logs so you can analyze what's going on. Um, publishing the bot right. This is uh, connecting. Once you develop the bot, you need to connect it to its identity on each of the channels. So uh, you know this is one place where you can just seamless uh, just quickly integrated and get going, um, and analytics as well. So let me just uh, sort of uh, uh, pause here. I think we'll switch to uh, a, a quick demo about the product. Uh, and we'll, in fact, you'll see, we'll, we'll create a bot uh, literally in a few minutes, and you'll get a good sense of it. 
So, uh, Sohan, over to you. Thanks, Baru. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm just going to show you a quick demo of how you can create a chatbot uh, using Gupshop. I'm on the Gupshop website now. So this is this is our homepage. It's called Gupshop.io. Uh, you log in using a GitHub login, and uh, I'm going to click on the My Bots button to actually create a bot. Now the thing is, we have a bot builder built into our website, right? And uh, usually before creating a bot, you would have to set up your developer environment, install a bunch of uh, developer libraries, then set up your server space. Uh, we have kind of taken all that pain and headache away from you by having this um, bot builder tool. So essentially, it kind of automates the grunt work and hides the plumbing from um, for the user. So I'm going to create, like, say, a webinar bot, right? And uh, let me show you the interface. Yeah, so this is the interface. Um, it comes with some templatized code that you see here, which has some of the methods that are commonly used. Uh, again, we have installed a pre we have pre-installed a bunch of libraries and, and we host our own code as well, uh, and we allow you to host your own bot as well, so you don't have to worry about server space and stuff like that. Now, uh, we also have an, a small emulator here that you can test, uh, that you can use to test out the conversational aspects of your bot. Um, and yeah, let's dive right in. So first, I mean, there are a couple of functions here, and, and, and I'll take you to, through each of them. First, there's a message handler function that you see here. So any message that your bot receives, uh, whether it's on Facebook Messenger, or WhatsApp, Line, Skype, whatever, uh, will be passed using this particular method, right? So we have a parameter called event, and event.message actually gives us what message is incoming. For example, if someone says hi, I can actually respond with the hello. Yeah. So a simple bot, if, if someone says hi to your bot, you respond with a very polite hello. For example, and we're going to test out an emulator here. Hi and hello, right? Uh, so this, I mean, this is how the, the most basic possible conversation that your bot can probably have. Now, maybe you want to give your bot some character, right? So assuming someone pings with a hello to your bot, you can respond with a how are you? And you can even get the username. Yeah, so I'm going to try it out here. I say hello to my bot. How are you, Sohan Maisho? Sohan Maisho is my GitHub name, and that's it, right? Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to deploy this bot onto a server by just clicking this one button. What this means is we have deployed it, and we have this concept called a proxy bot. Uh, a proxy bot, and we, we have a proxy bot on Telegram, on Facebook Messenger, on Slack, and all the messaging uh, apps out there. A proxy bot essentially allows you to test your app or test your bot rather in the messaging app without actually deploying it. And let me just show you to you. Here's the Gupshop proxy bot. I've just created a bot called webinar bot. So I'm going to say proxy webinar bot. So essentially what happens is, yeah, bot map successfully. So essentially what happens is the Gupshop proxy bot is going to act like the bot that you have just created. This is done so that you as a developer can really test out your bot before pushing it out into a production environment. For instance, we said hi in our bot to get a yeah <clears throat> this way to respond yeah so essentially yeah the proxy bot allows you to test out the bot in in a sort of production environment i'm just going to deploy it again in case it's not deployed yeah i'm going to say proxy webinar bot okay yeah, I'm going to say hi. Yeah. And there we go. Telegram is acting slightly slow today. Uh, a hello will give you a response that says, how are you, followed by my username on Telegram, which is this. So essentially, that's how you use your proxy bot to really test out your bot. Uh, yeah, so, so this is pretty much how you can start off by creating a simple bot. Um, of course, the bot that you're creating right now is a completely stateless bot. Uh, for that, we have we have something called a function called event handler. So event handler is a method or a function that, that runs every time some event happens associated with your bot. For instance, your bot is added to a group or, or your bot is pinged. Um, we also, just so that your bot can maintain state, we have two particular concepts. One is called bot level data 
and we have something called room level data uh, essentially what the bot does is it, it, it remembers state of each user and uh, and you can use that to, to further your interaction or to make your interaction really better with your user of course right now the bot doesn't do too much and uh, we're, we're guessing most bots here will actually have you know a http get and put calls uh, so so we have a method for that as well uh, it's called http response handler so essentially you can make a http api call and any response from that will be handled within this method so let's try out with something like a json okay this is down right now so let so this is what you see right here is the rss feed for techcrunch so let's maybe try parsing that yeah Okay, so we're going to say if your bot says tech crunch, we will make a simple HTTP call. Yeah, so simple HTTP call to the RSS feed of TechCrunch. Yeah. So essentially, what happens is if, if some user types out TechCrunch to your bot, it's going to make a GET call to this particular URL, right? And we're going to handle it in this form, in this method. Yeah. So the parameter event here is what you'll use to really get what response um, the HTTP sends back. So event dot get response will send will will get you the response. So we're going to pass it maybe Our response JSON. Sorry. Yeah. And now we're going to do some simple JSON parsing to really display the results out. Yeah, we will deploy this right now. Okay, um, we're going to add some more JSON parsing right here. Okay, what should we do? Okay, and now we're going to send response which is basically the story, the title, along with the link to the story. Okay, I'm going to deploy this and hopefully this works. So, I think that comes to the box. Yeah, it sent it sent me the link. So basically, we chose one link. So it sent me the latest link from TechCrunch with the title and the link. So that is how we created a simple sort of RSS bot um, using this. Um, of course, so this is just I mean the example I showed you was deploying it to a, a test bot on Telegram. Uh, Gupshop allows you to publish it to various channels as well. So these are the channels we support right now, Slack, Twitter, HipChat, Facebook Messenger, Twilio, uh, Telegram, and Kick. 
So, I mean, you can absolutely publish it to any of these channels, but I'm going to show you how you can publish it to Telegram. Yeah. So you, we need a token and a Telegram bot that you can create on Telegram. So I'm going to Telegram and just look for Botfather. It's a sort of universal bot that each Telegram user has. And I'm going to create a bot with the command new bot. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to call it uh, webinar test bot. Yeah. So now what Telegram does is it gives you a token to access it and a URL from which you can access your bot, right? This is the URL through which you can access your bot. I'm just going to paste the token here and the name for the bot, which is webinar test bot. I'm going to copy that and submit it. So essentially what Gupshop does is it, it uses the Telegram APIs and it publishes your bot to Telegram. Now your bot on Telegram is live. Hello. There we go. This is the bot that we've just written. It's already live on Telegram. You can check it out. Yeah. So that was a basic um, demo of how you can create and publish and deploy a bot onto Telegram. Um, we can open the floor to questions if anyone has some. I can see a few questions coming up. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll transfer this over to Birut to answer some of the questions. Yeah, hi. Uh, so there's a question about uh, provision API for strong NLP. So I think uh, what we found is uh, there are many different, uh, so firstly the bot platform that we have, uh, you know, it, it doesn't have any NLP capabilities in and of itself, right? But we can seamlessly and easily integrate with uh, with the many NLP tools out there, right? You have wit.ai, lewis.ai, even api.ai, and many others, open NLP and so on. And what we found is, you know, once you get into NLP, it gets very, very domain specific and different people want to do very different things, uh, which sort of as part of the platform, it's it's hard to do a common thing. So on our roadmap, we'll, we'll sort of include something by default. But today, you know, we built bots that use the NLP capabilities of wit.ai or any of these other services. And it's, uh, you know, like Sohan just showed you, there's a there's an HTTP call, right? So you can make a web service call to the NLP service. You get the, you know, you get the entity and the intent back from the NLP service. So, so you can you can connect the bot to any any NLP service out there. Uh, but I think going forward, we'll make it even easier. We'll make it sort of uh, we'll integrate it into the platform. That's clearly uh, that's on our roadmap as well. Okay, so there's uh, how someone would use AI to learn. Uh, so there's a question here which says, awesome demo. Could you please share how someone could, would use AI or learn about user preferences from uh, the Facebook Graph API and bring more relevant results like you did for TechCrunch? Um, you know, I think, uh, so the answer there is, look, there are the, the Facebook Graph API and there are many other APIs, right? They're all available. And I think the intent of the bot or this bot demo here is sort of not to take you through all those other things, but absolutely. I think the real power is, you know, you, you create these bots and you integrate or connect these bots to other services out there. It may be the Facebook Graph API. It may be, you know, could be other, completely other APIs as well. Uh, and that makes the bot richer and smarter, right? I think what we've tried to do with the with this bot platform is to automate the, the plumbing, right? So whether you have an intelligent bot or not an intelligent bot or other capabilities as well, it's really important that, you know, you still need to take care of the, the hosting, the publishing, the monitoring, the tracking, and so on and so forth. Uh, I'm going to use this question to make another point as well uh, around AI, right? There's a lot of uh, interest around, you know, bots and intelligence and NLP and AI and so on. And I just want to make a, a few important points that you guys should all remember, right? Which is, uh, you know, how much, how, how intelligent should a bot be? Okay. 
And if you think of bots, you know, going back to my earlier presentation, if you think of bots as the latest version or the latest reincarnation of a desktop client or a website or an app, and now we have bots, you know, um, we don't talk about intelligent websites, right? We don't talk about intelligent apps. So, you know, I don't think we should automatically uh, or necessarily talk about intelligent bots, right? And, you know, the word itself is a bit misleading, right? Bot comes from robot, so we automatically assume intelligence. But the reality is a lot of bots may actually be very simple, very straightforward, and in fact may have no AI at all, right? Or even NLP, it could be simple keyword response trigger. And I think the, the point I'm making is even though websites and apps were, were dumb or rather not intelligent, they still created so much economic value, right? And simply the fact that bots are the next paradigm will also create a lot of economic value, right? So, so I would suggest each of you guys to think about where you need intelligence and why. In fact, I know of bot developers that have actually added NLP and rolled it back because the moment you make it smarter, uh, you also raise the user expectation, which sometimes can lead to disappointment, right? It's like the Siri problem, ask me anything, and then when you actually ask anything, it can't prov always provide the answer, right? So it's really important to do it within context. Uh, in certain contexts, actually less is more, right? Uh, the example I like to use is when I'm at the pizza store or at McDonald's, you know, I don't want to discuss the philosophy of life. I really just want combo number two. and just get it to me, right? So it, it, less is more. Sometimes if it's a transactional thing, the bot should not be excessively chatty, right? So, so, so don't automatically assume that bots have to be intelligent. However, of course, because they're conversational, you can add NLP and AI and it, you know, I think it's a bonus, uh, but you should use it carefully. It's a, it's a double-edged sword. You know, if you use it indiscriminately, you may actually cause more problems for yourself than, uh, than doing it. So, Anyway, I, I wanted to take that sort of two-minute detour to explain about that. Uh, uh, there's another question here which says, uh, do we need to build a response for every question manually or can it also learn automatically? So, no, that's a great question and, uh, you know, no, you don't need to build a response for each question manually. I think in the demo, we just wanted to show you how easy it was to connect different things, right? So, so you have you know, I mean, a lot of it was hidden, uh, so it's hard to appreciate, but you can have messages coming from any channel, and it comes in one place, and the developer doesn't have to think about any of that, right? The developer's only thinking about the message handler, where you handle the messages, right? So, so it was just for the purpose of the demo, but like I said, if you connect it to an NLP service or to a learning service, uh, that's where the automatic learning would happen, right? So, so I think, think of the bot as, as really a connector, right? Uh, to me, the most amazing thing about the bot is it, it, it's available inside a messaging app, right? Uh, in fact, even the way I define a bot is it's really just a software program that can send and receive messages, right? Um, so, so if you think of bot in, a, in its most simplest sense, it, sh it should have the ability to send and receive and process messages. Now, what it does on the processing side is, is clearly up to each specific domain. If you connect it to, like I said, an NLP or learning service, it can do much more. Or if you have, you know, if then else sort of statements, it would be a very simple keyword response bot. Uh, I think the demo was meant to be uh, somewhat simple, but it gets you started, right? It gets you started working on uh, sort of more advanced things very quickly. Uh, there's another question about how do you compare uh, the Microsoft bot platform uh, with Gupshop? And, you know, I think we've, we've seen uh, the Microsoft announcement, which was uh, very interesting, and we played around with it a little bit. Um, I think if you are a uh, full-stack Microsoft developer, you know, where you love Visual Studio and the whole uh, sort of Microsoft stack, I think that may be, uh, that may be the preferred choice uh, because you may just be familiar with it. But I think uh, it takes you, uh, you know, but, but the other big thing is they haven't even, uh, you know, they said that the official release of the product was actually going to be later in the year. Uh, I think the demos were uh, really sort of preview uh, demos of beta products and so on. So firstly, our product is, is here, live, it's mature. We've been working on this for a couple of years, uh, like I said, long before it was trendy. Uh, secondly, it's sort of cloud-based, simple, lightweight. Uh, you know, we don't tie you down to any stack, 
uh, necessarily. Uh, while the demo we showed you was JavaScript based, uh, you know, so a mechanism where you can have a callback URL so you can build it in your own language and host it in your own way as well, right? Uh, we built it on top of AWS. So I, I guess as a, you know, as a new player, Gupshup can pick the best of breed tools and uh, layer it on top of it as opposed to Microsoft where you know they they want to tie it as much as possible into into Azure into you know the Visual Studio into all their other existing tools so so I think we are we are different as in you know I do believe um, Microsoft also has you know while they're strong they also have a lot of strong enemies that would not want um, the Microsoft bot plot bot platform to be as well integrated and so on, right? While as Gupshub, we're talking to all the messaging players. Uh, we've had fairly good conversations with, with the actual messaging platforms. We talk to them. Uh, we get sneak preview of uh, upcoming features. Uh, so, for example, you know, uh, there's new features coming in into Slack, into Facebook Messenger, and so on. And we work with them collaboratively and actively. So, so you would get the benefit of that. Uh, as you know, as we add those capabilities into our uh, platform. Um, okay, there's another question about is JavaScript the primary language for bot building? Uh, not really. Uh, you know, I think I touched upon this earlier. Uh, I mean, JavaScript is is uh, convenient and for our cloud-based IDE platform, right? So what we've built is really a integrated developer development environment for you know for building bots, right? Now in this IDE, we chose uh, JavaScript uh, because you know it offers a lot of flexibility and a lot of capabilities, right? We can uh, you know what was not uh, what we glossed over very quickly was you know when you click deploy, the bot is actually being hosted somewhere, right? And you never have to monitor it, you never have to track it, and so on. Uh, because it's auto everything is automatically just being taken care of by the underlying system, and we've, we've built it on we built a layer on top of AWS and AWS Lambda, in fact. Uh, so it's also very cost effective for you and for us uh, to be able to do that. It's hard to do some of these things in other languages, right? So so clearly, if you are if you have a favorite language, if you have a favorite hosting service, uh, you are a very uh, you're a developer that has specific preferences, then of course you can build it any which way you like. And even even if you build your own bot, um, you know, so on, it, on the screen, if you can just go to that callback URL, uh, I think that'll be good to show them. But there's a place where uh, instead of sort of using the default bot, so just go into any one of these existing bots. And, uh, you know, what we showed you was the hosted code but you can very equally well just put in a callback URL to your own bot, right? So if you built it in your language, hosted it on your service, well, then just give us a callback URL, and then we manage everything else, right? The publishing, the analytics, the data, the tracking, the logs, and so on. So the bot platform is still useful, um, you know, and, and I, think, I think what we found in our experience, though I will say, is uh, if you start building multiple bots, uh, you know, these are these are problems that you will start facing down the road. You may not see it today, but uh, hosting a bot, monitoring a bot, tracking a bot, I mean, each of these things is really, really painful when you have multiple live production services. And, you know, the more you can do it seamlessly without having to think about it, without having to worry about it, the better off you are, right? So, so what we are suggesting, what we are recommending is sort of this cloud-based IDE uh, which you know gets you free from worrying about hosting, testing, integrating, publishing, uh, you know, monitoring, and and so on. Um, in fact, there are a few other things that we haven't showed. But for example, uh, we'll also have some default behaviors available in the bot, right? Uh, for example, a bot should always respond to a hello, or it should always introduce itself, right? Uh, now, there are many best practices that we intend to bring into the platform. So that you know, you can just worry about message handling. Everything else is just available out of the box. Um, so, so we are con we continue to add. There's a very aggressive roadmap uh, we have for the bot platform, and you'll see many more features coming in soon. Um, okay, there's a question here. Uh, what is your licensing model? 
And uh, so I think that's a great question. Um, you know, this, I think I'll be honest, this space is uh, very new and, uh, you know, we're just seeing how it evolves and so on. So we don't want to get too far ahead uh, with, uh, with the business model. But in any case, obviously, I'm sure you're concerned if you're going to use the platform, then how are we going to charge? So our idea is essentially to charge for it like AWS, right? Like any infrastructure uh, platform, if you will. So it's going to be usage-based pricing. Our current thought process is it's approximately, uh, you know, a dollar per thousand API calls. Uh, but we have a freemium tier, so 100,000 API calls per month are free, right? And I think even at so at low volumes, it's free. At very high volumes, I'm sure we'll figure out some uh, discount uh, pricing model and, and so on. So, uh, you know, there will, be, there will be volume discounts as well. But use that as a, as a rough metric uh, for, for how this scales. I think we are, what we're really interested in right now is to create some uh, success stories, uh, to build some successful bots. And, you know, we're working with some really uh, sort of large companies, well-known companies as well. Uh, and then we also have the self-service platform. We have, you know, I think literally in the last two or three weeks, uh, we've had uh, over a thousand developers signing up very quickly. And there's about 2,000 bots built like just in the last couple of weeks. So this is ramping up very, very quickly. We're seeing a lot of interest. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a new paradigm, so be, you just have to try and experiment, and we want to make that experiment easy, make it free, and if there are some real use cases, uh, you know, where people want some uh, different business models, will be very flexible as well. Um, there's a question here uh, about, you know, do you see a lot of current app use cases converting into bot use cases? Or do you see new use cases emerging which are only bot specific? I think uh, I think the answer to this is is both really right. I think uh, very loosely speaking, there'll be sort of two kinds of bots, right? One where you have bots that are just a front end to some back end services, right? So let's say if it's an e-commerce service or a taxi booking service or a pizza ordering service, well you already have the service in the back end, and the bot is literally just a front end, another channel. Uh, if you will, right? Those, those are obvious. Those are absolutely going to happen, and that's kind of the low-hanging fruit, if you will. But I think what's more interesting is you're going to have uh, unique bot-specific use cases, you know, emerge. It's kind of like if you go back to the va uh, to the web paradigm shift or even the app paradigm shift, right? Like the earliest websites were kind of brochureware websites. They were literally, you know, you take the content available in your brochure and you put it up on the website. Uh, can you imagine that? Right, but then obviously developers and entrepreneurs started figuring out new things you could do, and you know transactions and uh, additional services and so on. So it just exploded from there. Uh, similarly with apps, right? The earliest apps were kind of like websites, but then you know you saw Angry Birds and uh, Candy Crush and some delightful app experiences, which just took it to a new level. I think similarly with bot, you know what's what's new with bots is the conversational interface. Right, the messaging, uh, the viral aspect of it. So I expect, you know, I mean, you'd have, you know, therapy bots and virtual friends and things like that. So I'm sure you'll see a lot of those uh, emerging very quickly. Uh, I think the other exciting thing from a developer standpoint is, uh, you know, when you think about the messaging paradigm, uh, it's incredibly powerful, right? Um, you have, see, when the when the web shift happened, right, in the mid '90s. Uh, when Netscape developed the browser, the installed base of the browser was essentially zero, right? Nobody had the browser. And it took like nearly four or five years before you got to a few tens of millions of browser installs and so on. But with messaging, right, you already have a five billion user install base. They're all using messaging and they're using it 100 times a day, right? Uh, the other cool thing about bots is, uh, bots is gonna need sort of zero training uh, and zero behavior change on part of the consumer. Because chatting with a bot is as simple as chatting with a friend, right? Uh, just like you type in your friend's name from the address book, from the local address book, uh, a bot name will show up from the global address book. So really, I mean, even my mom can use it, right? It's really simple, really straightforward, uh, nothing complicated about it. And that's incredibly powerful, right? So, so you build a bot, you build a service, and if it's viral, if it's engaging, I think you'll see some of the 
you know the, the killer use cases will scale to you know maybe billions of users much faster than you could ever do that in the app world or in the web world because you just have you know this combination of massive reach and ease of use is very very powerful so so I think uh, you know it, it, it is it, it's too big to ignore it's uh, super exciting and I think it offers a lot of opportunities. I think that's all the time we have for questions right now. Uh, thank you, Birut, so much for uh, answering each one of those questions patiently. I hope we uh, answered all of your questions. Uh, thank you so much for attending this webinar. I hope it was of some use. I uh, hope all of you all start building bots anytime soon. Um, if you have any questions with bot building, feel free to reach out to us. You can reach out to us on Twitter, Facebook, or you can write into us uh, on the support uh, portal on our website as well. We, we are happy to answer your questions. We will send out a recording of the webinar to everyone. Uh, probably send that out tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, thanks again for attending this and hope you had a good time. Cheers, good night. Okay. Thanks everyone, bye.